If you had seen Tron in 1982, then this show would look very familiar. With the glowing blue suits and vehicles, it was made by the producers of Tron. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be looking back at one of my favorite TV shows of the 80s called Auto Man. This show was broadcast from 1983 to 1984. It only ran 13 episodes, but it was still a fun watch. The show stars Desi Arnaz Jr., Chuck Wagner, Robert Lansing, Gerald S. O'Laughlin, and Heather McNair. Desi Arnaz Jr. is the son of Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz Sr., and he was famous even before he was born. His birth was very much publicized due to Lucy showing her pregnant self on her show. Back in the day, this was not something that was ever shown on television. Both Lucy and Desi fought hard to have the pregnancy written into the show. The network execs finally relented and let them have their story on the condition that they could not use the word pregnant. They had separate beds in the show, and that was so that there was no hint of them being intimate with one another. Desi Arnaz Jr. played Walter Nebaker, a police officer for the LAPD, who is also a computer programmer, and he develops the Auto Man program. He is the soft-spoken main character, not being very dashing or handsome. He desperately wants to be out in the field catching bad guys. However, the captain prefers Walter to be at his computer as he has no confidence in him. So Walter is more of the stereotypical computer nerd, but he manages to use his computer skills, and with Automan's help, they beat the bad guys by the end of the episode. Chuck Wagner is best known for his role of Automan, although he did more musical theater work and appearances on a variety of game shows. For the role of Automan, he wore 4-inch heels so he would look even larger than his 6-foot-5 frame. He also had to shave every six hours because being a hologram meant that he did not have a five o'clock shadow. As the story goes, Walter programs Auto Man, the world's first automatic man, who is a hologram that uses so much power he can only operate at night. Auto Man had a small sidekick called Cursor who could draw objects as needed like the auto car, auto plane, or autocopter. Auto Man is the most perfect being ever created and can do almost anything provided there is enough power for him to use. As he puts it on a scale of 1 to 10, I'm an 11. Auto Man's presence is explained by Walter to his colleagues that he is a member of a government agency Walter is working with and they accept that cover story. Robert Lansing played Lieutenant Jack Curtis. Lansing started out in the late 40s and early 50s as a radio announcer. He did some stage acting and this led him into movies and television in 1956. He has a long list of TV appearances, and in 1983, he was in Automat as Jack Curtis. Jack Curtis is the no-nonsense streetwise cop who has put a lot of years in at the force. He is a bit of a lone wolf, but unlike Captain Boyd, he realizes the value of computers to help solve cases. He is also a friend to Walter and acknowledges his contribution to the police force. Captain E.G. Boyd was played by Gerald S. O'Laughlin. He served in the military during World War II and the Korean War. It was during the 60s and 70s that he got more well-known on television. He was in shows like Gunsmoke and The Asphalt Jungle. Then in 1983, he was Police Captain Boyd. The captain is a bit of a technophobe who has no use for computers. He would use Lieutenant Curtis as an example of the ideal cop for the police force. The captain usually badmouths Walter as a disappointment and wishes that he could be more like Jack Curtis. Roxanne Caldwell was played by Heather McNair, who was only in Hollywood for about a decade. She was in shows like Knight Rider, Airwolf, and Auto Man. Roxanne is written as a sort of love interest for Walter, and she tries to raise his self-esteem whenever she can. She's a full-fledged officer, but gets relegated to being the captain's secretary, as he does not think that women belong out in the field. There are some nice surprise guest stars as well, like Patrick McNee from the British Avengers, Delta Burke from Designing Women, and John Vernon, who was the voice of Rupert Thorne on Batman the Animated Series. The auto car was a Lamborghini Countach LP400. The car could move insanely fast and take corners at 90 degrees. Anyone riding in there needed to buckle up as they would get tossed around inside of the car as it turned the corner. The show also had an autocopter, an autoplane, and an autocycle. There were other constructs in the series, but I don't want to spoil that for you. At other times, Auto Man had the ability to wrap himself around Walter for protection. They would appear as one person, but end up speaking in two voices. Auto Man's great demand for electricity would mean that he would suffer from power shortages during the daytime, so he was rarely active at that time. They only made 13 episodes, and it was put into the Monday 8pm time slot. 
Pit against Scarecrow and Mrs. King in TV's bloopers and practical jokes, it did not have a chance. So because of poor ratings and expensive special effects, each episode cost over $1 million to make, it was cancelled after only 12 of the 13 episodes had been aired. Overall, this is a fun series. It has some laughs, some good action, and for the time, some good special effects. And because it is only 13 episodes, it will not take up a bunch of time to watch it. Shout Factory has the entire series available on their website, and I have seen it for sale on Amazon as well. If it looks interesting to you, by all means, pick it up for a quick watch. I appreciate you watching this video. If you liked what you saw, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. That's okay too. Until next time, my friends, be well.